Welcome to County Office, your ultimate guide to local government services and public records. Let's get started. Why did the Supreme Court expand the incorporation of the Bill of Rights? The Supreme Court's expansion of the incorporation of the Bill of Rights is a complex and evolving process that has its roots in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Initially, the Bill of Rights, ratified in 1791, applied only to the national government and not to the states. This was clarified in the 1833 case of Barron v. Baltimore, where Chief Justice John Marshall ruled that the Bill of Rights did not apply to state governments. The landscape changed significantly with the ratification of the 14th Amendment in 1868. This amendment declared that no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States. However, the Supreme Court initially interpreted this amendment narrowly as seen in cases like the Slaughterhouse Cases 1873, which limited the 14th Amendment's reach. The doctrine of incorporation began to take shape in the early 20th century. In 1925, the Supreme Court ruled in Gitlow v. New York that the First Amendment's protection of freedom of speech applied to the states through the 14th Amendment's Due Process Clause. This marked the beginning of a case-by-case -case process known as selective incorporation, where key Bill of Rights protections were applied to the states. Justices like Benjamin Cardozo and Hugo Black played significant roles in this process. Cardozo argued that only rights so rooted in the traditions and conscience of our people as to be ranked as fundamental should be incorporated. Black, on the other hand, advocated for total incorporation suggesting that all provisions of the Bill of Rights should apply to the states. However, the court generally followed Cardozo's more selective approach. Over the decades, the Supreme Court continued to incorporate various Bill of Rights protections into the 14th Amendment. For example, the First Amendment's free exercise and establishment clauses were incorporated in Cantwell v. Connecticut, 1940, and Everson v. Board of Education, 1947, respectively. Later cases, such as Gideon v. Wainwright, 1963, and McDonald v. City of Chicago, 2010, further expanded these protections to include the right to counsel and the right to bear arms. The expansion of incorporation was driven by the need to protect individual liberties from state abuses and to ensure that the principles of the Bill of Rights were uniformly applied across the country. This process has significantly increased the Supreme Court's power to define and protect individual rights, transforming the Bill of Rights into a powerful charter of national freedom. To learn more, check out these links, which you can click in the description below. And feel free to comment your questions. We're here to help. Thanks for tuning into our video. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment below. See you in the next video.